Sometimes, I feel that life is passing me by. Not slowly, either, but with ropes of steam and spark-spattered wheels and a hoarse roar of power or terror. It's passing, yet I'm the one who's doing all the moving. I'm not the station. I'm not the stop. I am the train. Martin Amos. It's a whole bunch of whirling wheels, rods are flashing in the air. I guess they, they talk. You hear them, you feel them, like you, every sense. You just see the haze, you know, you see the motion. And you're just chugging along and chugging along and chugging along, just effortlessly it seemed, seemed to be as well. There was a, a moment in our history where virtually there were train lines everywhere. The train was such an integral part of our national identity. At the Angus shops in Montreal, the pinnacle of steam technology was being built. In 1944, Canadian Pacific Steam Train number 1201 would roll onto the rails, carrying with it a legacy of technological craftsmanship. It was the last locomotive built of Angus. The people that worked there were quite sentimental about it. I grew up next to a railroad track, very close to where the engine was built. It was a Sunday afternoon pastime for Father to take me down to the main line and watch the trains go by, and it's been in my blood ever since. tend to embrace technological change as a measure of progress. And, you know, those who don't get on the train, to, to use a you know, matter of view, are, are left behind at the station. Change was coming. Diesel trains were coming. I think there, there was, on the one hand, a, a push towards modernization, a push towards technological improvements, but on the other hand, a, a real wistfulness for what was now disappearing. Here is the new thing, and here it is. And yesterday, you never thought about it. And after today, you don't know what you would do without it. That was what the technology was doing. It was your slave, but in a sense, it might be the other way around. Terry Pratchett. The very shop where 1201 first breathed steam would become a graveyard. The skeletons of steam engines littered Angus yards. But 1201 was the last locomotive the Angus men built, and they couldn't bear to see her scrapped. With each scrapped engine, more than 50 years of steam engineering was disappearing. 1201 was their last hope of saving a part of it. I think it would be absolutely devastating to actually have to play a role in dismantling something that meant so much. There wasn't enough of, of a movement around to say, uh, you know, we need to, we need to preserve more of these in operating state. Steam locomotive number 1201 has arrived in Wakefield. It's a unique reminder of Canada's great railway tradition. The National Museum of Science and Technology is looking for steam trains. 1201 is given a second chance as a living artifact, 
passing the traditions of steam onto another generation. You're passing the information down, and that's very important. You know, we sort of borrow it, use it, and then pass it to the next generation. And that means you step aside and you say, you run it, I'll watch. I'll teach you, I'll show you, I'll do this. Duncan Dufresne, an ex-Canadian Pacific fireman, was 1201's in-house expert. He was John Corby's mentor. I learned more about steam locomotives and operating procedures from him than I, I owe a tremendous debt, but I think uh, that, I, that I, I, I really couldn't have absorbed all I had to absorb in such a limited amount of time without his presence. So he, gets to the to he goes to the top of the, my hero list. In turn, John Corby taught Jerry Goggle. 17, 18, 19 years old. And these guys were alive when steam operated and they all had talents. And Jerry Goggle taught Phil Jago. I sort of said it, you know, I'm here and introduce myself, this, that, the other thing, and uh, is there anything I can do? And they said, sure, you can wipe the tender. So I sort of say my first involvement with 1201 was wipe, wiping a rear end, as it were. As a new generation learned the ways of steam, they brought an artifact back to life. There's something about a steam engine that, that, that makes things come alive. To hear the hiss of steam, the merry shriek, the steam whistle, the laughing locomotive. Walt Whitman. If you ask any child, or even any adult, what their most striking memory is of going to the Museum of Science and Technology, it's getting on the train. I got to go on one of the trains. It gives us all a sense of collective, um, not a collective memory, but a collective experience, that this was part of something that built something bigger. And in a sense, it was. We were bringing the museum to Canada, as opposed to having Canada come to the museum. But everybody's getting older, you know? So there you go. This is it. Dying trade. Unfortunately. As those trades disappeared, it became harder and harder to keep 1201 in working order. She too would meet her end in 1990. Quietly and without fanfare, 1201 would come into Museum Station for the last time. I killed the fire. And I still remember that night. I said, look at her. She's firing herself. Because perfect way to run an engine is set it up and just let her go. And we came in and I said, I'll get down, I'll turn her off. I get down off the thing and uh, uh, just close the two valves. The next thing you know, the fire went out and uh, they shut this and that off and then we just slowly eased her into the stall and that was it. End of story. They can take a lot of things away from me at my age, but don't you remember it? <laughs> That's a great thing. And we made a business plan, and we tried to show them they could keep it, but the museum wasn't interested in new directions. I shall be telling this with a sigh, somewhere ages and ages hence. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by. And that has made all the difference. Robert Frost. <laughs>